Hello and welcome to Revolution by Out of Spec Motoring. Today we're talking all things Porsche Taycan. And yes, that's how you say it. Porsche just announced the Taycan to the world in their live stream video. They went into most of the numbers on the Turbo S, but uh, I just got an email into my inbox that compares them to other trims, such as just the Turbo, and we're going to go through and explain, one, what all these numbers mean. So if you're new to electric vehicles and you don't know what 265 kilowatt of regen means, we'll run through the list really quick here in the beginning of the video, and then later on we're going to get a little bit more into some of the cool features and chassis design that Porsche has done to make this a world-class EV. And then, if you want to see us drive it, subscribe. We'll be spending some time with a Taycan in the future, whenever we can get our hands on one, doing some tests, road trip, and probably drifting it around our racetrack. So, check us out on Out of Spec Motoring on YouTube and Revolution Podcast on all the places. Let's get into it. So, let's hit the numbers really quick and a quick explanation of what they all mean. 280 miles WLTP, that's the European testing standard in the U.S., we'll have EPA uh, rated range, and it's probably going to be less than that. Let's just say 260 miles is my guess, maybe even lower. But the good news is you'll get 200 miles at least of normal sporty driving on one charge, which is more than most people do in a day. And then if you do go farther than that, the 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, essentially that means the overall storage capacity of the battery is the same as almost the, as big as the largest in the Tesla vehicles. Um, you can charge it up to 270 kilowatt. And that is a significant amount of power, essentially more than any passenger vehicle can currently charge at on the road. And um, that is significant. Now that is only going to happen down low at the state of charge range, but Porsche says a 22 and a half minute charging cycle from five to 80%, which is incredibly fast. You basically have to run in, pee, get back in the car, reset the NAS and go. And uh, that is really, really good. So I think this is going to be a fantastic road trip car. You get 265 kilowatt of regen, which means anytime the car slows down, you're putting 265 kilowatts of energy at maximum regen back into the battery pack, which is significant. To put that in perspective, I believe my Model 3 does somewhere around 80 or 90 kilowatt. The Model S, I don't even think hits 100 kilowatt. And um, that is, you know, the, the highest regenerating car is the Hyundai Kona Electric, probably same as the Nero and Soltz, same similar drivetrain. That'll do 150 kilowatt regen. So this is a huge step forward when it comes to regeneration. And Porsche claims that 90% of your daily driving needs will not even need to use friction brakes at all. Two-speed transmission is very cool. We'll get into that a little bit later on into the video. It is a little more complicated. Um, but the good news is it's 2.6 seconds, 0 to 60 is really freaking fast. We all love that. That's great. 162 mile an hour top speed that requires no explanation. But what does require explanation is your peak power output of 560 kilowatt. Okay. Model S P100D Ludicrous, same with the X, is just about 570 kilowatt. And Porsche's system claims to at least be repeatable, reusable, and you just launch that thing over and over and over again. So essentially the same maximum power output with no heat buildup that will limit your power. <laughs> Porsche knows how to build some cars. That's basically what this means. And then of course you get over a thousand Newton meters of torque, but we all know electric motors make a ton of torque. This is going to be a monster. All right. So now let's get into some longer explanations if this is what you came for. So the, the top end, the flagship model is going to be called the Taycan Turbo S. Now, I get why Porsche did that. There's no turbo. We're going to gloss over that naming thing for now. But it's 750 horsepower, which is 560 kilowatts of power. And that's the real number. What's crazy is I used to own a Model S P100D with ludicrous mode. And when you put it in ludicrous plus and do launch mode, it had a peak output of 570 kilowatt. Uh, now that would, after two or three launches, diminish over time due to heat. Porsche says, and we're going to definitely test this, that their 560 kilowatts of power is repeatable pretty much until you run out of battery. So, uh, of course, as voltage drops, you'll lose a little bit of power, but they say you'll get maximum power repeatable, which is insane. Very cool. And so they'll have a launch control mode with overboost, uh, which is the same terminology that they use for their uh, gasoline cars, such as the 911 Turbo. You have the little overboost button. Same, I believe, in the 718s, but... Uh, Let's keep going. The Taycan Turbo 
has 670 horsepower, which is a, a significant drop, but it still manages to do zero to 60 in three seconds flat. The Taycan Turbo S is gonna do 2.6 seconds, zero to 60, repeatable. That no other electric car can do. Sure, the Model 3 performance can rip up and down all day, but it's three and a half seconds, 60. This is significantly faster and a much heavier car. So I'd say more impressive. The big difference here between the Taycan and every other electric car up to this point that is a production passenger vehicle is the battery pack architecture has been increased to 800 volts versus your standard 400 volt nominal pack voltage. Uh, and you know, we've seen 350 volts and 280. And so higher voltage is really great for a couple things, uh, mostly temperature management. If you have higher voltage and you need to get power out of it, you can basically with double the voltage, take half the amperage, have the same amount of power with less losses and, um, and you're not stressing anything as much. So I think it's very smart that they went to an 800 volt architecture. What I am concerned about is some of the 50 kilowatt chargers that we have in the United States and Europe uh, don't support 800 volts. They go up to 680 volts in some cases. So I don't know how they're going to be able to charge on some DC fast chargers because in order for that to work, the charger has to meet pack voltage and then it just dumps the amps in. So maybe there'll be a DC to DC converter in there somewhere. Time will tell. But the good news is Electrify America stations, of course, will be able to charge the Tycon at its peak rate of 270 kilowatt. Now, this is a, uh, a really big number and a big thing. You know, of course, there was rumored 350 kilowatt charging, and that still may happen in the future. Um, but 270 kilowatt, first off, is faster than any other electric car. Uh, we don't know for how long it can sustain that sort of charging power. Of course, uh, with Model 3 at 250 kilowatt in the long range packs, that's the only Tesla version that can hit 250 kilowatt, you get it from about 3% to 20% and then it tapers from there. So we'll see how Porsche's uh, done their charging profiles and we'll do testing on that, of course. At least according to Porsche, it's able to do an 80% charge from 5%. We typically do five to 90, but five to 80 is still great in 22 and a half minutes, which is incredibly impressive. Uh, the car has a WLTP range of 280 miles. EPA tends to rate the cars a little bit lower than WLTP rating. So let's say it gets 260, 250 miles EPA range. That should be achievable in most driving on the highway. If you're ripping it, let's say 225 worst case scenario. Uh, I actually think that's the right number for the range. I have uh, significantly more range in my model three and I never end up really using it. I stopped a P, I stopped at a supercharger. And so I think it's an achievement if they're able to get 200 miles of range on a car driving hard or at least hard-ish uh, on one charge. And I think that that's the right number. Here's a downside with the Taycan that I've, I'm just running through the specs as I explain this. But essentially the Taycan only has a 9.6 kilowatt uh, onboard charger and it uses J1772 of course. So this is for home charging. And if you do 240 times 40 amps, 240 volt times 40 amps, that's what gets you 9.6 kilowatts. So it's limited to 40 amp charging. J1772, the standard goes up to 80 amps. I really hope with a 96 kilowatt hour pack that this thing has, that it would really have faster AC charging. But Good news, we'll just DC charge these things and see how well the batteries hold up. <laughs> so the overall capacity of the uh, high voltage battery is 93.4 kilowatt hours. I'm not sure what's usable of that range or if that's the usable range. They say overall capacity. I'm imagining that's the full thing. We might get 88, 89 kilowatt hour usable. They'll put a little buffer at the top and the bottom. Or since it's Volkswagen Audi Group and they also made the e-tron, will get no range because they'll just put massive buffers on it. But no, I think uh, that's a significant battery pack. That's the right size for this car. And it makes a lot of sense. We're not going to get too into the styling of the car. That's totally up to you to make your judgments on it. I think the car is going to look great in person. However, what's really important is the drag coefficient is 0.22, which is really, really low. I mean, it's lower than a Model 3, than a Model S. They've done a great job on that, and uh, this is definitely one of the slipperiest cars ever made from an airflow perspective. Porsche is using some cool powertrain technology to move the Taycan, 
And uh, one of this has to do with the motors themselves. Apparently, they have the highest power density for their weight and size of any electric motor used in a passenger vehicle, which you'd expect nothing less of Porsche to go above and beyond in in that sort of area. But um, both of these motors are permanent magnet motors, which means you can't shut them off like you can in some of the Model S and X cars. Model 3, of course, has a similar setup where... The all-wheel drive version decreases range over the rear-wheel drive because both motors have to be on all the time. Uh, Not a huge deal. I think the car gets, again, plenty of range. We're not going to harp on it. But um, with the big news here is a two-speed transmission on the rear axle only. And so this is really cool. And from my understanding from reading the press release is it's going to use first gear for hard launches, basically launch control anytime you punch it at low speed. But for normal cruising and just up and down the highway, it's going to prioritize a second gear that will have a longer gear ratio and it'll give you higher efficiency uh, for the motor and inverter, essentially. That means traveling at high speeds, you can work everything less, but you also can gain power for longer because the inverter efficiency will, will basically be extended due to a higher gear ratio and you'll be able to pull maximum power up to the maximum speed of the car, which is just above 160 miles per hour. Porsche is known for coming up with these crazy acronyms to say their names. And this car, thankfully, has PASM, PDCC Sport, and PTV+. Plus. Thank goodness. All right, on to the next one. No, I'm just joking. These are actually really big things. Uh, PASM is Amazing Electronic Damper Control for Suspension. PTV Plus is essentially a torque vectoring built into the differentials on the car, so it can overdrive the outside wheel and pull a little back on the inside to help the car corner better, whatever the car is trying to do. It is a really cool sensation. Uh, I owned an ICE Porsche with these systems, and it was very, very, very cool. Being Porsche, you get a little knob on the steering wheel that'll allow you to adjust your driving modes just like their ICE car. So you'll have normal, sport, sport plus, and range mode, which is a new one. And you'll also be able to customize all of these things into an individual mode. Of course, you can adjust your steering, suspension, your your, uh, uh, torque vectoring, however you want the car to drive. Put it into a file, dial it up on the steering wheel, and then it's a personalized driving experience for you. (music) 